Hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining today. Um, so lately I've actually been exploring a lot of new languages. Uh, I've been trying to see, you know, catch up, you know, a lot of languages are pretty old and there's a lot of new ones coming out. So I've been researching them and in that process, I, I found something really interesting that actually has like really profound implications at the deepest level of computers onto themselves. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that but my presentation is really lamely named Why Concurrency, but it's much more than that. Wait, I don't know what concurrency is. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna go over it real fast. Um, it's complex, but hopefully this will give you some, some context of what's going on. All right, so let's say it's 1981. Uh, you know, you're uh, watching Miami Vice and you got your new computer. It has a single CPU. This is the brain of the computer. Uh, it is, uh, you know, the actual thing. It's, it's the thing itself. It's not, it's like the core heart of hearts of what a computer is. Or, but this is actually in the past. If you fast forward to modern day, computers actually have multiple CPUs. So they have multiple brains that each, you know, can uh, do different stuff. Uh, so we got, you know, let's say, you know, a computer has, you know, four to eight CPUs these days. Um, so think of it like if a human being had four separate brains. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Conventionally, a single CPU will do one thing at a time. Task A to Z, so you know, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, do, do one thing at a time in order, um, just like singing the alphabet. Uh, concurrency is do everything at the same time on multiple CPUs. It's like do everything at once. Um, now, this is not really true. Um, this is like gonna be some nerds in the answer, but like, no, it's not, it's not really true. It's, it's, it's more complex than that, I, I know, but I'm trying to keep it simple for people that don't understand concurrency. Um, and what's important to understand is that most Languages are not optimized to do this well because they were invented in 1981 when we had single CPUs. That's like, you know, C and everything else. Uh, here's a kind of confusing chart um, that don't pay much attention to that. My point is, is that uh, concurrency and parallelism are actually two separate things, but for the sake of this presentation, we're kind of mashing them into one. Um, if you want more insight on what the difference is, uh, it's been said that concurrency is like dealing with multiple things at once. It's like the concept of like, how do I do everything at the same time? Whereas parallelism is specifically executing different tasks at the same time on different CPUs. Um, but don't worry about that for now. For our sake, concurrency is just doing a bunch of crap at once. All right, here's the actual start of the presentation. Now that you have some vague idea of what concurrency is. Okay, so uh, stateless and concurrent methodologies are getting pretty popular. Uh, you know, we have microservices, you know, let's run six virtual servers on a single CPU, uh, do everything at the same time. Um, you know, and there's a lot of languages, you know, that are gaining steam that have been built from the ground up with concurrency. Uh, things like Scala, uh, Erlang is not new and sexy, but it is, it is a, you know, a, a, a language built with concurrency in mind. Golang is new and sexy, and it's built from the ground up with uh, concurrency. Um, you know, so there's, there's some serious attempts to move on from Java. Uh, audience laughs because that's never going to happen. Uh, Golang, which I'm going to focus on right now uh, for this presentation, is getting lots of momentum. Actually, we saw that earlier graph. I don't know where you went. Uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, that showed that you know, how, I, and I was actually surprised. You know, Go is actually more popular than TypeScript, which is kind of shocking to me. But you know, it's obviously very popular. If you ask someone why, you know, like, like I, I've actually talked to a few C, like tech CTOs, like, oh yeah, we just we just moved our whole stack over to Golang. I'm like, sweet. Why'd you do it? And they're like, you know, because uh, uh, C sucks, because uh, monoliths are terrible. Uh, it's easier to work concurrency, which makes faster programs. Um, but really, like, you know, X sucks compared to Y. You know, that's like, you know, what we complain, uh, as programmers say all the time. Um, but it's not really a great reason. Uh, it's, it's that attitude never really makes for a genuine shift in momentum towards something. It's, it, it's minor improvements like that. Uh, that are marginal rather than revolutionary never really constitute a substantial change in technology. And to prove it, you know, I have CoffeeScript, Elixir, Dart. These are all things that were intended to be, you know, like Elixir, it's going to be the better Ruby. CoffeeScript, it's the better JavaScript. And, you know, that now they're all pretty much dead languages and Java still rules the world. Um, so uh, the reason why these things are getting popular is because there is a dark secret of technology that Go and other concurrent languages intends to address. Now, most of you are familiar with Moore's Law. 
That's the idea that every 18 months, the number of transistors on a uh, CPU double. Basically, in a layman's sense, is that like, things are exponentially faster as time goes on. You know, with every passing amount of time, you know, things are to have doubled in speed. And that's how it generally understood and how I understood it before I started doing some deep research. Um, yeah, it turns out this is, this is actually highly misleading. And the reason why is that several years ago, not months, years ago, the clock speeds that we could achieve on a CPU ma maxed out, and my voice cracks. Uh, <laughs> gains in transistor density are only from slapping additional CPUs on the board. So, you know, we had, you know, so you say, uh, we have four CPUs, and now we have eight. We've doubled the transistors. But, you know, each one of those individual CPUs isn't faster. We just kind of, like, hacked more onto the same board and called it a day. So what I'm saying is our computers are not getting faster. Yeah. <laughs> we keep adding additional CPUs, but current languages don't even know how to use those additional CPUs by default. For those node guys out there, how often do you see process.fork in the wild? Seriously. And, and forking your test framework, uh, with, you, uh, it doesn't count, because that's, that's not even in production. You know, you actually very rarely see people actually take advantage of, of, of you know, concurrent processes. Intel's heroic efforts with the Intel Core i9, $2,000 process die in vain, because they'll spend all this money, and they'll see no benefit from it. So I'm gonna talk about Golang, switch gears a little bit. So Golang was invented to maximize concurrency in multiple c threads and CPUs, basically, it uses this insane proprietary uh, concurrency model that, you know, on the fly determines, you know, when you run two plus two, it figures out what the optimal place and which CPU to, to put it. Um, but the point is that it's built from the ground up with this, with this awesome concurrency model that's built by like, these ultra super geniuses. You know, the inventor of Unix, for example, wrote, wrote Golang. Um, and, 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 and it's one of the few languages that have been designed for the ground up for concurrency. And the reason why is we are not getting faster, so we need to be more efficient. And I emphasize that, we are not getting faster, so now is the time to get more efficient. Now, what does that actually mean? Money. It means money. And the reason why is because uh, there is a direct relationship There's like a, uh, between how fast your programs are and how much money you're spending, because we put everything in the cloud these days. Especially, and this is gonna get more important in the future, because serverless is coming online where you literally pay for how much clock, clock speed you're using. You know, in the past, in the cloud, you know, the model was you pay 10 bucks a month and you get you know, a CPU with four cores and you only use one of them. Now, it's in the, and going forward with serverless, it's literally gonna be you're gonna pay however, the money you spend is gonna be directly correlated to how, how well optimized your code is. Um, most of our code is not optimized for currency with multiple cores right now. Um, we are leaving so much horsepower on the table with our servers. This is basically, the real world analogy I come up with is like you're, right now you're paying for Netflix, HBO, Hulu, Amazon Prime, but you only ever watch Netflix all the time. You know, those other three services, you're just wasting money on them. And that's what it has. You know, we're, we're paying for four, eight core servers, and we're only ever using one. So we're wasting a ton of money. And it's not gonna get bad, better because, you know, it's, uh, our computers aren't getting faster. So as we create more and more demanding programs that do crazier AI stuff, we're gonna need to really start thinking about cash spend. And I was actually talking with James earlier, and you're talking about uh, how uh, render farms, which are extremely computationally expensive, how people do all these crazy efficiency hacks to make them more, uh, make them basically, you know, to bring the cost of rendering a, a, a scene from $10,000 to $5,000, you know, so, you know, as we get more into expensive territory, that's the stuff we're gonna have to think about. So, in conclusion, the party's over. Uh, you know, you can't, you know, back in the day, they said, uh, oh yeah, you know, your program's slow, don't worry, just wait like two years and it'll be run fast on a new computer. That's not happening anymore, the party's over. We have no more free lunch. So we have to start thinking seriously about using concurrency and making our programs efficient and optimized. Um, and you know, uh, you know, if your leader asks why, to save money. It's all about money. Thank you, everybody. Learn, go, learn, use process fork.